Law Warrior Armor Double Feature, Blizzard Hover Transport. Overview. Cressley Warworks designed the Blizzard in response to the need for a faster platoon transport. Standard infantry transports had proved inadequate in the face of the rapid clan advances, as the Federated Commonwealth discovered at great cost during the clan war. Because the AFFC lacked speedy troop transport, countless ground troops were stranded behind clan lines and were captured. In designing the Blizzard, Cressley aimed for a vehicle that could move troops as swiftly and effectively as the famed Maxim transport, but at the lower cost. The finished prototype met almost all of Cressley's expectations. The Blizzard could carry more troops and move quicker than the Maxim. However, the Blizzard didn't offer near as much protection as the Maxim as a result, and sails of the Blizzard remained soft until the eruption of war and the Sana March brought the vehicle renewed notice. Capabilities the Swift Blizzard Transport can carry an entire platoon of motorised or jump infantry. A simple modification of the cargo compartment allows it to carry up to two full platoons of standard foot infantry. Designed with infantry in mind, this hover transport offers extremely comfortable seating. The seats can be converted to beds for transporting up to 14 wounded soldiers off the battlefield. The Blizzard's maximum speed of more than 130 kph allows it to reach most battle zones in seconds, and troops can disembark swiftly and efficiently from its multiple exit hatches. This focus on speed and comfort, however, comes at the expense of weaponry and armour protection. The Blizzard's armour is adequate, but not exceptional. Its single turret mount long-range missile launcher provides only token harassment fire against any approaching unit. Deployment so far, the Blizzard has appeared mainly within the boundaries of the Chaos March. The Federated Commonwealth and Lyran Alliance have expressed interest in the design, but have yet to deploy the vehicle itself. The Blizzard may end up just about anywhere. Cressley's only factory is located on the so-called Trader's World of Epsilon Eridani, and the company doesn't discriminate against any buyers. Variants. Because Cressley hasn't had much success with the Blizzard until recently, no known variants currently exist. Cressley promotes the craft's large cargo capacity as a strong selling point, and so is declined to uh, tamper with this design element. 3058 Upgrade Overview Designed to counter the swift-moving clan formations, Cressley Warworks' Blizzard Hover APC was accepted but never quite elevated to the level of use its designers had hoped for. After its rather quiet debut in 3054, Cressley continued mediocre production runs of the Blizzard, hoping for some event that may help this swift transport get noticed. Operation Guerrero and the subsequent formation of the Chaos March was just the chance they'd hoped for, as numerous factions developed and began a massive build-up of their respective militaries. Not able to afford battle mech formations, nobles instead built up their conventional militaries, Demand for this low-cost vehicle increased, and Cressley decided to keep production of the Blizzard going into and beyond 3070. Capabilities Like most infantry transports of its size, the Blizzard relies on speed to get the job done. At a blazing speed of 151 kph, the Blizzard can get in under the range of enemy weapons fire while firing a suppressive barrage of LRMs, deploy its infantry payload, and retreat under another suppressing barrage of missiles in less than 30 seconds. The capacity of the Blizzard is equally impressive. Two standard infantry platoons or a single platoon of heavy infantry could be transported without any loss in speed. Its most prominent feature, however, is the ability to be modified in minutes to carry well over a dozen wounded soldiers off the field, swiftly and comfortably. Indeed, this feature has impressed many small mercenary and paramilitary units who can't afford the losses better finance units can. However, these features do come at a steep price. At 25 ton, half of it's devoted to the engine and cargo capacity, the Blizzard lacks any serious armour or weaponry. A single turret-mounted LRM-5 is its entire armament, barely enough to leave a mark on most modern combat units. Its armour is just as light as its weapons. Three tons of standard armour can only resist a few laser hits before crumpling, so Blizzard crews are often ordered to stay out of sight until right before deployment of infantry. Deployment Though many factions did take an interest in the low-tech, low-cost design, the Blizzard wasn't deployed heavily by major powers for its first few years of production. Most were content with using it as a reserve infantry transport during non-combat situations or as emergency medical evac units. All this changed during the Capellan Reunification War with the St. Ives Compact. A heavy user of infantry, the Confederation needed to mobilise every infantry unit, frontline and reserve, to continue its spread-out invasion of both the Compact and the Chaos March. Every vehicle transport was moved to the front line, including the Blizzard, where it served with distinction. 
with prominent warrior houses carrying multiple squads of Fa-Shi battle armour from skirmish to skirmish, often under enemy fire from the start. Casualties increased, so multi-A hover APCs were brought into act as short-range escorts for the heavier blizzards, and subsequently, the losses tapered off. Currently, the Trinity Alliance is the only major power that still relies heavily on the use of the blizzard, but it does remain relatively popular among the independent worlds in the Chaos March, as well as the word of Blake. Variants. Not pleased to lose sales to a design that is over 500 years old, Cressley has released two short-range variants to compete directly with the multi -A. The first version merely replaces the LRM-5 with a pair of SRM-2s. The second, more extensive and advanced as a modification, is pure escort variant for several standard blizzards. Guardian ECM, a pair of turret-mounted SRM-4s paired with dual machine guns and an extra half-ton of ferrofibrous make the so-called Black Blizzard a fearsome fighter, drawing fire while the transports deliver their cargo and escape unharmed. Not surprisingly, the biggest purchaser of this version has been the Epsilon Eridani Militia. The word of Blake, a close second. Notable crews. Vengeful Spectre. Sighted several times in several different systems, a lone Blizzard Hover APC known as the Vengeful Spectre broadcasted Capellan identification codes both entering and exiting the lines. Capellan Intelligence later learned the vehicle was under the command of Davian counterinsurgency teams, gathering intel and conducting raids behind enemy lines both during Operation Guerrero and the conflict with the St. Ives Compact. It isn't known whether this was a single vehicle used several times, or if MIIO maintains a fleet of these vehicles for just a, such an occasion. So if we go back, the stats. It's a 25-ton vehicle that's a hover vehicle. It has a Nissan 95 internal combustion power plant, cruise of 97, flank of 151 kph. Its armor is Star Slab 3, with a single Long Fire 5 LRM-5, manufactured by Cressley Warworks, primary factory on Epsilon Eridani. Its communication systems is the Angst Clear Channel 3, with targeting and tracking system Blaze Fire Sight Lock. Uh, I believe this all stays the same. Yes, it does. So yeah, it's a 25-ton hover transport, rather wide. Um, it looks very Star Warsy, actually. Like some, it reminds me of uh, some of the West End games uh, art uh, that was in uh, in some of those books. For those of you who remember uh, the West End game stuff, um, so yeah, it, it immediately puts me in mind of just like a kind of generic vehicle that you might buy in like the Outer Rim territories or something. And that's not a bad thing because a lot of the Star Wars vehicles look very cool. Uh, I do like this. It looks it looks sweet. Um, it Perfectly in fitting with the Battletech universe. It moves f uh, 9 on cruise, 14 on flank. Doesn't have to worry about heat sinks because it doesn't need them just because of the single launcher. Its armor is pathetically weak. It has 10 on the front, 10 on the sides, and 9 on the rear, and 9 on the turret. It's got your standard 24 shots of uh, LRM ammo, but it's not really there to fight. It is literally there to do the job. This is the kind of thing that you could set up as part of an early, uh, early part of a mission where the players are moving with a bunch of these uh, APCs, they like, like they're burning ahead of the, of the, uh, the player's mechs, uh, obviously disgorging their infantry, taking fire, so, you know, you can have it that the players don't get shot at immediately, like the vehicles are getting shot at, and, you know, maybe a couple of them get hit and crash into the ground spectacularly, and you see, like, bodies flying out of the back of the vehicle, or, uh, you know, they just explode in an eruption of flame, people running around on fire. You know, you, you set the scene of this, like, horrible battle that's about to take place, and, like, infantry jumping out, firing, you know, like, missiles and heavy weaponry as they're getting, you know, like, scrambling for cover while the players charge, you know, forward in their mechs to hit the front line. That kind of thing, you know, or you're, you know, you're the ones that, on the defending side of it, you're, like, you know, trying to kill as many of these hover transports as possible before the infantry or, or whatever jump out and, you know, start trying to uh, swarm your position and, you know, play kick the can. So... Yeah, there's a few uses here and there. It's also the kind of thing that, you know, players as a mercenary company, they might have a few of these in their inventory for obviously getting their own merc infantry around. And uh, just something that, you know, in MechWarrior role-playing, uh, the tabletop role-playing game, where the player characters might move around one of these things, as it says, it is relatively fast, which means, you know, the players can hop in one of these and zoom off somewhere, get to a location where they're going to maybe, uh, you know, meet some shady character or get to a location that they're required to for as part of the, the game that the GM's running, that kind of thing. So I think there's a bunch of uses for a vehicle like this. Uh, it's relatively cheap. It's not going to kill a player anytime soon outside of some fantastic die rolls. Um, you know, it, it's it's just a good little 
mini objective thing, side objective thing, uh, just a nice little vehicle that the players, like one of the players would go like, oh yeah, you know what, I've, I've got the cash, I'll buy myself my own personal hover transport, fuck it, why not? Or take it with us on the dropship. You know, whenever we want to go to town, we ride up on one of these things. Yeah, quirky little vehicle. I like it. So, yeah, that's the Blizzard Hover Transport. Thanks for listening, everyone. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.